Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the extra mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now your hosts, Jackson Mummy and Megan Saya from Celebration Bar Review. Hey everybody, welcome. And we are glad to have you all with us. And as always, Megan will be joining me. We have a lot of news today to share with you. A lot that's going on. We got results in some major states. We had some announcements in a couple of states that are significant. And then we just generally riff on whatever's going on in bar exams. So that's the plan. This is probably a good time to bring Megan in and let's talk about what's going on. Hey there. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. One of the big stories this week, obviously, was results coming out in some major jurisdictions, including Florida. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to talk about what happens if you got unsuccessful results. And I want to preface all this by saying we had fantastically good results compared to the state averages. But if you were one of the people that did not pass, you can begin your studies right away. You should jump back into your studies and not wait. We are, I think right now, about 100 days to the next exam. So uh, the clock is our enemy, in a sense, if you will. And while it's really easy, I think, to just feel so disappointed and stressed out and unhappy about a bad result, you don't get the luxury of waiting very long to do it. Does that, does that sound about right? Am I being too mean when I say that? No, I think it's probably good anyway. You don't want to wallow, right? We want to mourn it and then pick yourself up and keep moving forward so that you don't have to stay in that. And hopefully next time around, you'll be successful. Yeah, and we had a lot of people that were in exactly that position for this February exam where we've gotten results. And so we're going to be sharing some interviews. I've got several people who've already committed to do interviews with me. I'm always excited about that. It's always fun to hear those stories. So we'll get those out to you as well. But anyway, that's what's going to happen. So with that in mind, where do we want to start in the world? of? So next, let's talk really briefly about who's going online. So again, more movement in this area. The little side states that I want to just mention real quick are Louisiana and Rhode Island are doing remote exam for July 2021. But of course, the big one that I'm sure most people here are interested and curious about is Florida. So Florida announced that they will be doing July 2021 remote. So again, they had on their website, the Tampa Bay Convention Center, the normal place that they do it. Forgive me if I got the name wrong, the exact name wrong, but and then they <laughs> came out and said, nope, like it worked really well as they, this is their words are saying, it worked really well to give the exam to I think over 1800 people in the last February exam online. So they're gonna use the same software and do it online again. So if you're in Florida, unless you have an accommodation that allows you to take it in person, you will not be taking it in person. This is not an optional piece. This is everyone, unless they have a special dispensation, will be taking it online. Yeah. I got an interesting email from somebody that failed the Florida bar who was very upset that they had to type the exam because it was online and felt that was unfair because they didn't type. And and I I appreciate the challenge of that, but I think you have to recognize that we're moving into a different world. You really do have to type your exams. We talked about this, what, last week or the week before. And if you're not a fast typist, that is a mental block that you're putting in. It's really not a physical thing. You can improve your typing speed sufficiently. And following the writing approach that we're talking about, you can get in a 60-minute essay, you can get up... 1200 words pretty easily in a 30 minute essay you could get 750 words and get successful answers so don't let that online piece throw you and i think the, the real the big picture here is if florida is going to go online again in july that starts to make it look like online is going to be the preferred methodology and I'm, we're seeing this in the big states now we've got florida california new york all online Really, the only large state holdout is Texas still for an in-person exam. And not to put too fine a point on it, but they switched from an in-person to an online exam, what, a month before the test in February. So uh, it's still not impossible. That could end up being an online test as well. So, you know, something to keep in mind, definitely, with those exams. Yeah, definitely. Clearly, the typing is not going anywhere. Even when they were in person, it it was typing. Very few people handwrite their exams. We talk about all the time, you are at a disadvantage if you handwrite. You're at a disadvantage in terms of editing. You cannot edit the way you can on a computer. If you have written it, it is going to be a mess. If you're drawing arrows and saying, crossing things out and never mind and trying to move things around, you can't do that when you're handwriting. 
you can't get as much in. I, I find it very hard to believe that you're incapable of typing quicker than you are handwriting in a way that's neat and legible. Yeah. It's just going to be quicker. So again, practice. If you're uncomfortable with typing, the number one way to get faster is to practice. And so everything that you write in your practice should be typewritten. Yeah. And as you're doing that, you will naturally get better even with devoting zero extra time to practicing typing. Just that practice of doing everything on your yeah. computer or laptop will help you get quicker. Yeah, I, and the bar examiners. Exercise, but, but ultimately it's just, you're harming yourself if you handwrite at this point, honestly. Yeah, I agree. And the bar examiners have made very clear that a slow typing is not an accommodation. It, you, know, you can't, I, the same person said, I went to the bar examiner and said, do I get an accommodation because I'm a slow typist? And I guess they laughed him out of the room. It's just not going to happen. You've got to learn to type. Yeah. So, right. Cool. Yeah. You get an accommodation if you, there is a physical or mental right. Right. Com right. component to why you are a slow right. typer, but no, <laughs> not just. Two finger right. typing doesn't, uh, it's not yeah. accommodation. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, yep. wow. And we have another student question saying, have any jurisdictions released dates for the next available exam after 721? When I can answer that really quick, it's just always uh, the last Tuesday in February and the last Tuesday in July. The weirdness was 2020, but that's because there was a global pandemic, which God willing will not happen again, at least as long as I'm in the bar exam business. So yes, we, it's just automatically that's when the exams are given. Yeah. And you should be studying for the July exam right now. If you think you might not be ready, it's not a problem in our course to postpone to February, but don't wait until you're 100 days before the February exam, which is what human nature tends to do. So put your foot on the pedal and start now for sure. Yeah, definitely. But yes, the next exam after this July will be the February uh, 2022. 2022. Oof. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're both shivered at the same time there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so now let's move into what I'm sure a lot of people want to hear about, which are results. Yeah. So Florida released their results. Jackson, you want to talk us through kind of what these pass rates look like and the statistics yeah. that were released by the examiners? Yeah, and I know that this is going to sound a little geeky, and if you're not a Florida bar taker, you may be thinking maybe it doesn't matter. But Florida has always been the canary in the coal mine. It tells us where the rest of the big jurisdictions might be falling out. And by big jurisdictions, I'm really now talking about California, New York, Texas, uh, Georgia. Those are all tend to fall in line with what Florida is doing, or in some cases, even a little worse. In Florida for February, there were 1,854 total takers. That is a decrease from the previous years. And we'll talk about those numbers in a minute. But of those 850 bar takers, only 650 were first time takers. So we had almost 1,200 repeat bar takers. We had nearly two to one in repeat bar takers over first time takers. And that's a significant disparity there. It does something that's very unusual. I don't know any other jurisdiction, maybe you do, Megan, that they only announce a first time bar taker pass rate. They don't announce a repeat bar taker pass right. rate. Very we have to wait. Yeah, we have to wait a year and a half to get it from the uh, NCBE statistics. So here's what we know. The first time bar taker pass rate for the February 2021 exam was 62.4%. That is not a good number. That, but that's the first time takers, right? So there were 400 people that passed of the first time takers. Then when we get the second number, which is how many candidates are admitted to take the oath, which is not a perfect one-to-one -one match because some people will pass and not be ready to take the oath, but there were 500 people admitted to take the oath. When we get that number, that tells us that there were perhaps as few as 100 of the repeat bar takers that actually passed the bar exam. Now let's go back. That number of repeat bar takers was 1,200 people, which means that we are looking at seven to 10% pass rate for repeat bar takers. Now, seven to 10% is gobsmackingly awful. It, it represents a disaster. And frankly, it represents an unfair gatekeeping. There is no rational reason that I can think of for people who have finished law school and have taken the bar exam to be passing at a rate of seven to 10%. It, it is horrible. If you're one of the people who retook the exam and were not successful, I know it's not a lot of consolation, but you should know that number. One out of 10 passed. That's pretty horrible. That's the bad news. 
The good news is we blew that 10% number out of the water. The number of repeat bar takers in our course who passed far exceeds that. And we're still waiting to hear from people. And typically it takes a few days for all of that to come in. Some people don't, they won't tell us until they get their mail-in results, but, but we're already well above that. So that part is good news. There were, and I, I wanted you to talk about this, Megan, there were some people that came within a point or two of passing. And I thought it might be important to just talk about the mindset and the, the mental approach when you've come that close to passing and you don't quite make it. Yeah, I think what's really important to do and not to be too like Pollyanna-ish, but is to look and be proud of what you did. That if you came within, and I know it's so heartbreaking, we have a, a few students who came within one or two points of passing yeah. Florida. And it's so heartbreaking, but the thing to look at is to say, that is doable. I can do that. Like you can gain a point or two on the exam. Really, that is it, the good news of that is that you've shown to yourself that you are capable of passing it because that's really a, that's like a, a couple of luck, right? Did you get a couple more questions right on, on the multiple choice? Did you write like a couple more sentences that really just hammered home your analysis in that essay and, and suddenly you've passed? And so I, I know that it's really hard and it's really discouraging. And in some ways it can feel like, would it be better if it had just been a blowout? Not yeah. even, but I really think that you should feel proud of what you accomplished if you came that far. Clearly this pass rate for repeat takers, we don't know it exactly, but it's going to be atrocious because of the numbers that they have given us. We can extrapolate that much. And, and so if you came that close, you've got to know that it's not, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't. It's not that you didn't put in enough work. Now, maybe you know yourself and oh, I really didn't didn't give it my all. But for most of you, we've seen you and we've walked with you through this process. It's not that there's something extra you should have done or some other way you should have if you just put in an extra hour that week or whatever it is. So be proud of what you've done and recognize that it's not a reflection of who you are as a person or your capabilities or your intelligence or your writing ability. And now figure out what can I do to get myself over the finish line and let us know what can we do to help you get over that finish line because that's why we're here ultimately and we try to give a lot of resources if it was a mindset problem right if it was that you felt a little bit unsure and you second guessed yourself jackson talks about all the time all these amazing resources and workshops that are for you to get in the right state of mind when you're studying but then also to get yourself in that state of mind while you're actually taking the test if it was your essays and you just need a little bump, come work with me on the personal writing workshop. Make sure you're doing the group coaching. Maybe you need a little kick in the pants and Brianna would be like a great coach for you. Maybe you need some encouragement and Bobka is going to be the right person for you. Maybe you need some of that more focus and meant getting yourself in the right mental state. June would be a great person for you to go to. So we're trying to give you as many resources as we can on our side to help you as you diagnose what do I need to just get this done with, to be able to cross this off my list and say I've passed and this, I don't have to study for this test anymore. So let us know what yeah. we can do to help you. Yeah. And we've gotten some amazing letters and, and emails from people the past week with results, not just in Florida, but in some of the UBE jurisdictions. And one in particular is a student who has been taking the bar exam for 17 years off and on and talked about all of the resources that we provided and the changes that had to happen for the student uh, to do it. And then they, they went in after all of those tries and they not only passed, they blew the numbers away. And I'm hopeful that, that we'll get that student into an interview to, to talk about it. But I think we see that over and over again, Megan, that the people who have come close and not made it, then find that extra piece and they make it happen. And, and I know many of you have been following on our Facebook page, some folks that announced that they had passed in Florida in particular, who had come so close so many times. In fact, one student was actually told they had passed the bar in Florida only to be told a week later, whoops, we made a mistake and had to go back and take the exam again. It's, it's that kind of craziness. So the people that are really determined and take advantage of the resources can do it. The test is passable in spite of these numbers, which I think are 
abysmal and ridiculous, but there you go. I wanted to add one other point about the numbers in Florida. The only statistics that we have, the latest statistics we have on repeat bar takers comes from the National Conference of Bar Examiners from 2019. That's the official statistics. And in 2019, in February, the repeat taker bar rate in Florida was 34%. So we're looking at a drop from 34 to maybe 10%. That is incredible and staggering. And it, it tells you why the Florida examiners don't want to announce that number. They're hoping that 18 months from now when the number comes out, everybody will just forget about it and, and move on. But they're playing games in Florida and it's not a good situation. If you don't have to take the Florida bar exam, I would tell you what I say in California, don't take that test. Go take the UBE somewhere. It's portable to 32 states. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't get you into Florida or California or Georgia, which is why you have to do those states individually. But man, Florida's crazy right now. So that's what we know about Florida. We have updated the study guidebooks for Florida bar takers to put in the actual subjects that were tested. There was one surprise. I did want to mention this. The second essay in Florida, we had understood to be a trust and professionalism question. The examiners added Florida con law as one of the testable subjects within that question. So we're going to parse that out and try and figure out what the Florida con law problem was that was in the essay. So I thought that was very interesting. Everything else was as we had identified it for you in both essays and multiple choice. So there you go. That's the news out of Florida. Strange as it is, always got to love those Florida bar examiners. All right. So Jackson, can you talk next about the pass rates in the UBE jurisdictions generally? Now, obviously, we haven't heard from all of them or even close to all of them, but there are a, a good number that have been trickling in every day, it seems. So yeah. what are we seeing? Any patterns or anything we can glean from these pass rates? Yeah, it's really interesting. The National Conference has a, you can go to the ncbex.org site and we'll link it up in the replays, but it's in their statistics, I think statistics and research about bar exam results. And what we're seeing as results are coming in, the only real big jurisdictions besides Florida right now is Illinois and their pass rate was 42%. So even worse than Florida's. And we're like, oh my God, that's horrible. And then we see some states like Oklahoma with 74% pass rate and Wyoming with 86% pass rate. And we're like, what the heck is that? How are we getting these wide, widely divergent numbers? And I think the answer lies in the number of people taking the exam. What we are seeing in the states that have released results is that most of them had relatively few bar takers. We're gonna talk about this on the, the national level in just a minute. But we are seeing states that had 30 people pass the bar exam or 15 people pass the bar exam. And when you've got small numbers in jurisdictions, depending on who's sitting in that group of 25 or 30 people, your numbers can just go haywire. So that's the bad news, I think, is that you can't really extrapolate from these small jurisdictions at all. I don't know how many people took the Nebraska bar exam, but I'm guessing it was fewer than 100. And I would say in most of these states, that's probably true. The one state that's an outlier to that is Illinois, and their bar rate, uh, pass rate is not good. So it conforms to what we're seeing in Florida. So this is not to make those of you that took California, Texas, New York, Georgia uneasy. But the objective reality right now is the numbers don't look good in February. And so I know that you're going to read about some of these states with very high pass rates, but just remember, it means that seven out of 10 people passed a bar exam because only 10 took it. It hardly tells you anything. So don't get too uh, worked up on those specific numbers. We'll keep you informed as we see bigger numbers and bigger trends. And I, what do you think? Will we see uh, New York by the end of the end of April? Do you have a you want to make a prediction? You want to go on a limb tonight? I do not want to make a prediction. Not at all. <laughs> I, I just watch and wait. And then when I find out that they've been released, then I say, oh, okay, great. They're here. <laughs> okay. right. I just yeah. report. Just the facts. Yeah, just the facts. <laughs> I do have spidey sense. And my spidey sense says before the end of April, we will have New York results. So let's see what happens there. Um, I, think we're, I don't think this coming week... I think the last week in April is a possibility. And that's when Georgia results will be released in a month as well. So yeah, 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 we're getting close. And then California, they just, we take our sweet time. Yeah, we'll get to you when we're ready. You know? yeah. <laughs> be grateful that we let you take the exam. Uh, oh, that's New York. I'm sorry, New York. Yeah, right. yeah, that's New York. So there you go. All right. Okay. Yes. What else um, all right. So last sort of general topic that I wanted to talk about with this is, can you walk us through the numbers with this 
MBE mean scores analysis. So they just release the statistics on the MBE, which of course they can run pretty quickly because if this includes the all takers. So even if your state has not released, they obviously knew your MBE score immediately. And so they've run the stats and anything interesting that we can learn from that. Yeah, I think a lot. And again, I'm geeking out, but now everybody should be interested in these numbers. The national mean multi-state score, scaled score for February 2021 was 134. Now, that is an increase from the mean score in 2020. But in case anybody's forgotten, 2020 was a train wreck. Everything went wrong. Everything got screwed up. And in the fall set, the July, August, September, October tests, the MBE wasn't given in some states like Florida. It was given 100 questions, not a full MBE in most states like New York and California. So I love this. The examiners talk about what's called a reliability index. And you and I have talked about this before. You have to have, you really need 200 questions to be reliable. So what the examiners said, and I am quoting here, reliability for the February 2021 exam was 0.93, slightly higher than the reliability for February 2020. But they don't tell you what the reliability was in <laughs> February 2020. It was a lot less than 0.93. And we said that all along. That test was going to be an outlier. So if you take this 134 national mean and you compare it back to 2019 before the pandemic occurred, the national mean was, drum roll, 134. So we're exactly where we were before the pandemic. Now, the examiners pat themselves on the back and say, isn't this wonderful? We did all of this great stuff to get back to where we were. But it's also important to recognize that February bar exams have historically had, now going back many years, this 134 or less for a national meet. So the question that comes up, people say, that must mean the February test is harder. Is that true? No, I don't think so. I think it just goes, it's really only fluctuates a couple of points, which is interesting, but it tends to go up and then back down and up and down and up and down. Yeah, it's really an interesting body of bar takers, right? right? February's got repeat bar takers. They tend to score lower than first time takers. So it's a, it's not that the test is any harder. We could put 10 multi-state bar exams in front of you and say, tell us which ones are February and which ones are July. You couldn't do it. There's no, there's obviously no way to do that. So we have to look at the statistics and see what goes on. So that's one set of statistics. The other interesting number to me is the number of bar takers. In February, 2021, we now have a, a total number. We've been anxiously waiting for this. That total number was 16,759 bar takers. Now that doesn't include attorney exam, applicants are Florida only, but that's, we're talking about relatively small numbers there. But if we put that in comparison in 2017 in February, there were over 22,000 bar takers. So what's happened is that we've lost 6,000 bar takers in a matter of four years. And that is clearly a result of the pandemic. We, we thought that February, 2021 would be a lower number of bar takers generally because it took so long to get results out of the fall 2020 season. I think this is proof of that, don't you? It's a 3,000 bar taker drop just out of the February 2020, which was mm -hmm. already a weird number because we were just starting to roll into the pandemic then. So I think that when we look at that number, what that tells me going to July of 2021 is there is a big wave that's going to hit us. That number is going to go way up from what we're seeing here. I wouldn't be surprised if we get into the 30,000 range of bar takers in July of 2021. Interesting to see what that means. If you're trying to figure out what does the 134 mean, it's enough to pass a few jurisdictions, not enough to pass Florida or California, not enough to pass Georgia. So there you go, not enough to pass Texas. So it's, it's good enough to get you into some UBE states, not quite good enough to get you most places. Also interesting, last thing statistically, is that 33 jurisdictions administered the test in February remotely and 18 administered it in person, nearly two to one online. I thought that was an interesting number as well. So yeah, so that's my that's my bedtime reading. <laughs> Jackson Geeks, the, the title of this episode is Jackson Geeks Out on Statistics. So, yeah. yeah. No, I think the one takeaway too, I will, will give people as an encouragement is that every exam without fail, I see and hear and read people saying, these MBE questions were insane. This was so crazy. I've taken the bar several times. I've never seen questions like this. They were the weirdest set of questions. Who could ever answer these questions? And yet, 
Yeah, the mean score <laughs> goes like like pretty like it's two points up and down two yeah. points, which just I think tells you like <laughs> don't panic. Like the tests are pretty much they're pretty much the same. It's really the same stuff. I've I have read literally thousands of questions of FP <laughs> questions. And they're really pretty much the same kind of questions. I have been for years. So don't panic. Don't listen to people like that who are telling you, oh, the questions are just off the wall and zany and nobody could ever be expected. No, like they're really pretty consistent. Don't panic. Don't listen to people who are trying to get you worked up and yeah, yeah, it's not fair. We had it harder than it's ever been in the past. Like it's, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> we, we also have the advantage now with online test results that we get to be able to look at the data points. And so I went back and did a little bit of checking to see what our mean score would have been for February students. And it was higher than 134. So it's not a surprise that we're doing better than the repeat bar takers are doing nationally. And I think if we took that mean score and broke it out by first time takers and repeat bar takers, you'd see an even bigger difference. Yeah. But we're beating the overall number of 134. Give you a couple of questions from the chat box. First, okay. regarding the California MBE, is 140 a good number to shoot for? Yeah, now 139 would be a passing score or 1390, but we just cut off that last digit because California multiplies everything by 10. <laughs> a 139 scale, I think is going to be about, looks like from these numbers I'm seeing, it looks like it's gonna be about a 129, 130, maybe a 131 wrong. So that's the number you're looking for out of, correct out of the, the 200 questions. The, and even though 175 are all that count, they bump the scale up, but that's essentially the number you're looking at. If you're getting 140, great. If you're getting higher than that, even better. But remember, California is the highest multi-state score requirement in the country. So that's the top end. So if you've got any question about whether or not selective intuition works or this deeper knowledge approach that we use, I think the answer is becoming dramatically clearer that this is a very successful way. And the last thing I would say is the highest scores are the photo readers by far. The photo readers do better on their exams on multi-state than people who are not photo readers. So if you have not looked into photo reading, I would encourage you to do that. We're seeing pretty good jumps, and we saw it in, in the Florida and the UVE results that have come out, North Carolina, a couple of other UVE states that released. We saw photo readers doing very well, really, in both jurisdictions, both groups. So there you go. Wonderful. Good job, everyone. Good work. <laughs> All right. yes. um, let's and, talk... and stay tuned for those interviews because they're going to be awesome, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have some great stories already. And we, gosh, we haven't even heard from the major, some of these yeah. major jurisdictions. But it's great. All right. And our last question, does the photo reading material cover all the subjects and the essays as well? Photo reading isn't the study itself. It's how to study. And so, yes, you use photo reading on everything. You use it for your essays, your performance tests, your multiple choice tests. And we show you how to do that. And we walk you through it in the photo reading syllabus. So you will be photo reading all of your substantive outlines. You'll be photo reading questions as you're learning. And you'll then engage in using photo reading to write essays, to write performance tests, to take multiple choice. So it is a comprehensive approach. That's why we call it photo reading for the bar exam. And of course, you remember back when we used to do boot camps, Megan? <laughs> those. Yes, those, <laughs> yeah, so those live events. Uh, we would teach photo reading in a weekend and show people how to use all that. Now that's all online uh, because in a pandemic world, we can't do in-person things, maybe someday. But it's all there. And photo reading for the bar exam is a comprehensive approach to how to use, bless you, how to use the uh, photo reading materials in all aspects of your study. So encourage you to do that. I, I also want to say, as I've been getting results back, a handful of UBE, but a lot of Florida results, tremendous number of photo readers passing the exam. And I, I just, and they comment about it and talk about it. And I, I don't understand how it works or why it works, or I just didn't, I didn't think it would work, but here I am. And I'm seeing these, they're, they're gigantic jumps in scores for some of these people, aren't they? It's just, you just look at it and go, wow. If you can move the needle a couple points, generally, you feel like you're doing pretty well. Look at these MBE scores. They don't move very much. So when you are getting three or four points scaled, that feels pretty good. We're talking about people getting 10, 15, 20 points or more scale. It's gigantic. And so, again, I just want to say, if you're not a photo reader, at least check it out. Look, watch the video. There's a, I think June's probably put up the uh, the order 
page, you can just click into that page. There's a video I do there that explains photo reading, I think, pretty well. And I really encourage you to take the time and check it out. I think it makes a difference. Um, so where are we now in the world of, of bar exam? Where do you think people should be in their studies at this point? Oh, you're the better uh, better expert at that. Nice so job. we're 100 days out. So people should still, they're still working through their substantive materials, right? Yeah, yeah, so don't panic if you're like, why am I not exclusively doing the review where we've got a little while still until you quite a while. It happens that people feel yeah. like, shouldn't yeah. I already know everything that I'm supposed to know? Yeah. So I hope what I'm telling my students right now is wherever they are, that I want them to be focusing on creating and building their mind maps. So I want them to be, this is the time where you are still getting the substantive material down. And so that means that as you're writing an essay, you're taking the black letter law from that essay that came up in that, and you're going to your mind map and you're making sure, do I understand where it fits? Is it missing from there? Do we need to see how does it interact with other pieces of this subject? Same thing if you're doing your subject specific MBE questions, you're making sure, do I understand this? Going over those answer explanations for the ones you got and the ones you got wrong and making sure that's clicking, that it's not just your lucky guess, but you understand the why behind it. And and that you're continuing to stick to your study guide, wherever you are in that study guide, that you, at 100 days out, we're still moving through it and not, don't skip over things that you don't like particularly, keep, keep moving forward on that. And if you're working with me or working with Jackson, that you are scheduling those appointments and not putting them off because, oh no, I've got con law next and I hate con law. And so maybe I'll just I don't want to send this to Megan because it's like going to be a bad essay. Just that grin and bear it, um, send it in and let's talk through it and then move on from it. Don't let it become a sort of Damocles hanging over your head. Okay. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think for a lot of people right now, this is the worst writing that they do because they're just starting to get into this process. Maybe you've just started the course, which is fine. Or maybe you've been in the course for a little while, but just starting to do the writing. And this is where the work is the roughest and where Megan and I have to do the most directive uh, coaching to say, you oh, know, move this, do this, look at this. But then what we see inevitably is after a few attempts, you start to get the hang of the writing and then you start to be able to relax a little bit and show what you actually know. And you begin to get the hang of the study as well and start trusting that instead of trying to have memorized it and, and doing all those things that we know are not as successful. And so we start to see a huge improvement when we get into about 60 days before the exam. But between where we are today at 100 days and 60 days is rough sailing. And so it, it is going to be it's not going to be a happy time for many of you. And you just need to know that. And, but it'll get over. You'll get over it. You'll get past it. And pat yourself on the back for having started now, because there are people who won't even think about studying for the bar exam until a lot later. And then they'll be under a lot more pressure to do all this in a shorter period of time. Not fair to ask you that question without warning you, but your answer was great. So thanks. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being with us. I know that we've got some of you that probably just got your results in Florida or some of the UBE states and you're, you're smarting a little bit because you didn't pass. I want to just remind you that you were heroes to take this exam in February of 2021. This was unquestionably one of the most difficult test times ever because of the late date coming out of the fall, because of the pandemic uncertainty, because of the changes around format and so on. If you're feeling bad, which I think is certainly understandable. Feel bad about the result, but don't feel bad about yourself. You did something that's pretty remarkable. And if you didn't make it, okay, we don't have to start in the valley again to climb this mountain. You're already partway up the hill. We'll pick up from where you are, but don't foxhole right now. I think that one of the things I worry about the most, when people get these results, they get embarrassed and they don't want to tell us. But as Megan said, we're here to help you. We have a lot of resources. We have a lot of things we can do to assist you. And we just need to know where you are. And so please understand that this is a judgment-free zone. Our goal is to get you through the exam. And I can tell you that many of the people that we heard from this week were people who had, in some cases, failed by a point or two, in other cases, had failed for decades and got through the test. It can be done. And so if it didn't happen for you, the answer is we just have to analyze it and figure out what went wrong and fix that. And 
I, that's sometimes it's simple, sometimes it's more complicated, but we're pretty good at doing that and, and we've got a lot of experience at it. So give us a shot, let us try and help you. And remember with the lifetime pass guarantee, you're not paying anything to sit in the course. So it's not a question of that. We just wanna make sure that you get through it. So I hope that helps. For those of you who are waiting for results still, New York, California, Georgia, Texas, a lot of other states, <laughs> hang in there. They will come uh, sooner rather than later, generally, unless you're California, and then we'll be later rather than later. But there you go, and, and we'll be ready for you as well. So anything else you want to finish up with, Megan? No, that's it. Keep working. Keep moving forward, everybody. And really great job. I'm just really proud of the work that we're seeing from everyone and the great attitudes. And I'm just, yeah, you guys are rock stars. So keep it up. Don't get discouraged. Yeah, we just, we really enjoy being on this process with you. So thank you guys so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you all. Thanks, Megan, for being with us. We will see you again, and we will see what's new and crazy in the world of the bar exam. So have a great study week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and watching the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers at celebrationbarreview.com.